Hello everyone, it's Kenny and Gabrielle from Oxmoor Auto Group. We're down here today at Dare to Care at the Community Kitchen and we got some really exciting news. This is the first of a three-part series with our friend Chef Teresa here and she's going to be making some great recipes that you can make with your kids. Another cool thing that we are doing is that we are partnering with Us Born Books. So we have kids cooking books. So what we're going to be doing is when these videos come out, these cooking videos, you are going to go to Dare to Care's Facebook page, like it, and you'll be entered into a drawing to be able to win one of these. And there are so many cool recipes in here. Yeah, they're great for cooking with your kids. And the stuff that Chef Teresa is going to be cooking over the next three months for us is actually going to be things that you can do with your kids. So these books will kind of help give you some guidelines of other things to do with it. So today we are going to be making lemon blueberry muffins. And that sounds amazing. Yum. <laughs> Hello, welcome to our kitchen here at the Dare to Care Community Kitchen. I'm so happy to be with you today. I can't wait to show you this recipe. It's been a favorite of my kids since they were really little, and it's a great way to sneak in some extra nutrition. Uh, we'll be substituting out the fat in this recipe. Traditionally would have been butter or oil, and we're gonna use plain Greek yogurt, and we're also gonna use a mashed avocado. I promise your muffin won't taste like guacamole. Let's get started. First things first, you need a pretty good sized um, avocado, you want it to be pretty uh, tender to the touch. You want to be able to kind of depress the skin just a little bit to make sure you get it completely mashed into the recipe. Uh, keeping your fingers out of the way, you want to make sure that you're grabbing over the top of your avocado and just rotate the avocado around and give it a twist. Once you've done that, very carefully, you're going to use a knife and just tap the seed and also give that a twist. All right, once you've got your avocado de-seeded, you're just gonna scoop it into a medium-sized bowl. There we go. And this part's really great to get your kids involved. All they need is a fork or a spoon, and they're just gonna work their way around the bowl, smashing the avocado until it's pretty well uh, broken down into a paste. You wanna try to avoid really large lumps, especially if you've got picky kiddos. Uh, sometimes if they can spot the sneaky vegetable in the recipe, they're not as likely to give it a try. So once you've got your avocado all mashed up and in your bowl, Go ahead and add your Greek yogurt. Crack in your egg. And add your vanilla. We're going to go ahead and mix this up until it's just combined. There we go. So now it's time to add your dry ingredients. We're going to use a mixture of white all-purpose flour and whole wheat flour. I personally prefer to use the whole wheat white flour. It still has all the fiber. Those fibers have just been pulverized into a much finer grain, which makes it a little bit easier to um, make really good baked goods that are going to be bouncy and kind of light and not as heavy or dense with the full bran in it. So that's our whole wheat flour and our all-purpose flour. We're also going to add about a quarter cup of flax seeds. So flax seeds have a lot of really great oils in them, fats in them. It's going to add a ton of fiber, which is going to be really healthy. And we're gonna go ahead and add in our sugar at the same time. We're also gonna put in two types of leaveners. We're gonna add baking powder and baking soda and a pinch of salt. Last thing, I like to add some lemon powder. Uh, this lemon powder is commercially available. Let me see if I can grab my jar. Uh, this comes in lemon, orange, and lime, and it adds a really nice boost of flavor without throwing off the chemistry of your baking. 
So if you've ever tried to add lemon juice into a baked good and not had the proper amount of leavener, your cake might have sunk or your dessert might have sunk. And so this is really great. And we're going to mix this until just combined. We really don't want to over mix this. It will be a pretty thick batter. But the more we work it, the tougher the product will end up being. And we really want to try to avoid that. There we go. So I know that this looks really thick, and it is. It's a pretty stiff dough for a muffin batter, but it's going to end up really fluffy and delicious, I promise. All righty, so we have our blueberries. I really like the wild blueberries that we can get frozen uh, now because they're much smaller than commercial blueberries, and I just think that it makes for a really good muffin to have a little bit of blueberry in every single bite. So we're going to fold those in. And folding just means that we're going to cut the spatula through the middle and flip those blueberries from the bottom to the top of the bowl. And we'll just repeat that until the blueberries are incorporated. There we go. I love how the blueberries turn the batter just a little bit purple. These little scoops come in dozens of sizes, and it's a really great way to do portion control. Uh, even if you're just serving something like, say, mashed potatoes or rice, having these graduated scoops makes it really easy to serve dinner and make sure that you're staying on track. Uh, this one is a two ounce scoop or a quarter, a quarter cup, and I'm just gonna drop these in. Uh, my muffin tin has been lightly greased, and then my muffin cups have been lined with paper liners uh, just for ease of cleanup. get the last of it out. There we go. We're going to set this aside for just a second. Into a smaller bowl, you're going to drop your butter, which is already cut into small pieces. Uh, this was one of my children's favorite chore when they were helping me cook when they were smaller. Those little fingers really do a really good job. Uh, we're also going to add lemon zest, a little bit of whole wheat flour, and some sugar. If you have rolled oats, those are really great for a streusel topping as well. Once you have everything into the bowl, you're just going to pick up with very clean hands the pieces of butter and smush them between your fingers. The exposed butter will get coated in the flour, and that's how you make a streusel. You can add spices. You can add... Um, more flavoring, I like lemon zest with these and these muffins, uh, but really streusel topping can have brown sugar and cinnamon, that's really good too. And it's a nice way to kind of fancy up your muffins. So as you can see, all I'm doing is just rubbing the lumps of butter between my fingers and just dropping them back into the bowl. That lemon zest smells really good. Once you have it as fine as you like it, some people like it more like coarse sand. I like slightly bigger chunks because I like the crisp, crunchy uh, texture once the muffin is baked. So once you get it down to the texture that you like best, then we're just going to go ahead and put a little bit on top of each muffin. Measure with your heart. How much, how much is enough streusel on a topping is entirely up to you. If you need to make more streusel, make more streusel. There we go. And then I'm just going to clean up the edge of my muffin cups because if you've ever tried to scrub the edge of a muffin pan when you bake something onto it, you know that's kind of miserable. So we're just going to kind of clean ourselves up just a little bit to start off with. There we go. And we're about ready to put these in the oven at 375. Don't they look great? And I'm going 
to set those to bake for about 15 minutes and check them. If they need a little bit more time, usually it's somewhere between three to five minutes that needs extra. So I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. And we'll see you back soon. Alrighty, so our timer just went off, so we're ready to take these out of the oven. Look at how pretty those turned out. And we're going to move this over here to a cooling rack. Make sure you don't put your hot pans on top of your countertop, particularly if you have natural stone or a composite. It has the tendency to either A, scorch it or burn it. It's just not safe, so you always want to make sure you're putting these onto a cooling rack. If you don't have a cooling rack, you can also use a couple of layers of cardboard, and that'll help insulate your countertop. All right, so now our muffins are done. We've let them cool off uh, to about room temperature, and now we're ready to give these a try. Yes. Oh, thank Can't you wait. so much. Yes, here you go, Kenny. Thank you. These look delicious. So lemon blueberry, is that correct? Lemon blueberry. Lemon blueberry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. They smell really good. I wish you all could smell it. If we had like a smell camera, that'd be great. Smell cam on I don't know if we can do that. <laughs> right. So if you open them up, they're nice and uh, light. Mm. They're really mm. bouncy on the inside and they've got a pretty great flavor. They're delicious. Yeah. Oh, that lemon too. You can really taste mm -hmm. that lemon. Mm. That is incredible. Uh, Thank you. I love that crunchy streusel mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. topping on them too. The streusel, I love the way that you explained how you did that with the butter to make it bigger streusels mm -hmm. with, yes. with the flour. Yes, it's exactly. So good. I learned something today. Oh, good. I learned a lot. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to try this with my son. He'll love it. So once again, if you'd like to be entered mm -hmm. to win one of the Usborne books, cookbooks with your kids, not supposed to talk to your mouse full. No, right? you're not. not. So I am. <laughs> but like Dare to Care's Facebook page, like this video, mm -hmm. and we're going to be back in one month. Yes, we will. With, with another recipe from Chef Teresa. So Chef, thank you so much for having us. Yes. Thank you for coming. This is awesome. Thanks. Thank you.